Well, a warm welcome to today's talk, Wednesday the 15th of March. Now, questions are now being asked, I'm pleased to say, in the UK Parliament about the excess deaths which are still around, actually in most countries in the world. I'm going to play you a couple of those in a minute. For now, let's just get some orientation from the European data. And we see that there's been excess deaths here from this is March 2022 all the way through to December uh, 2022. So we see that the excess deaths have been in the range of 7 to about 18% at the moment or for December. This is the Eurostat data. That's the latest data that's available. So excess deaths through all of 2022. And these are not attributable to COVID-19, or at least a lot of them are not attributable. The majority are not attributable to COVID-19. So let's go over to the first question in the House now. This one is from Esther uh, McVeigh, Member of Parliament. Team, Mr Speaker. Uh, uh, Mr Speaker, in my letter to my right honourable friend, I noted that it's likely a combination of factors has contributed to potential excess deaths, including high flu prevalence, ongoing uh, COVID-19, uh, and the disruption to um, the treatment and the detection of uh, conditions like heart diseases. But I know that my honourable friend, is, right honourable friend, is very thoughtful about this and follows it closely, and I will endeavour to get her more detail. Mr. Mike. Mr Speaker, well, I'm pleased my question has now resulted in a response for which I'm grateful. However, uh, from that response, I was none the wiser how the government has explained the non-COVID excess deaths we'd seen. So can the minister give us an insight into the reasons for the non-COVID excess deaths since the pandemic? Well, Mr Speaker, even if we just take one particular disease like um, uh, CVD, uh, we see that there was disruption to both screening and then to referrals and then on to treatment from the COVID pandemic. And this was uh, noted at the time that this would happen and there would be consequences from it. But let me set out in more detail to her all the exact uh, th- facts and figures on this, because I know she's been following it very closely. Good. So it looks like Esther McVeigh is going to be given uh, more details on that. I wouldn't hold your breath, judging by the quality of the minister's answer there. CVD is not a term we use. Cardiovascular disease, maybe ischemic heart disease, but it's just not a term we would normally use. So basically, he said nothing, and and Esther McVeigh there said she's none the wiser. So uh, disappointing that um, members of Parliament aren't getting a satisfactory answer. Let's look at the question asked by Mr uh, Andrew Bridges, another member of Parliament. Uh, Mr Speaker, after a pandemic which uh, saw considerable excess deaths, we'd normally expect a period where there'd be less than the expected number of deaths, as those who sadly passed before their time during the pandemic reduce the figures of the numbers passing after. That's not what we're seeing, Mr Speaker. Indeed, when looking at the deaths registered weekly in England and Wales, produced by the ONS, excess mortality in England, produced by the Office for Health Improvement, and the disparities and mortality monitor, produced by Continuous Mortality Investigation, the Office for Statistics Regulation stated last month all three do reflect the trend of a marked increase in excess deaths. Can we please, therefore, have a debate in government time on excess deaths, an issue which sadly affects every constituency and every community in the land? Well, I thank uh, the Honourable Gentleman for, for raising this. It is incredibly important that we, uh, that we analyse and we learn from our experiences in the pandemic to ensure that we are as prepared as we can be uh, if, God forbid, uh, such circumstances rise again. Uh, I think this is an issue that uh, a lot of members across the House will want to focus on, and uh, I would encourage him to apply for a debate in the usual way. Well, that was uh, Penny Mordant, the minister, and um, if she gave an answer there, I don't think I quite caught it. She shares the concern, which is good, and she's worried about another pandemic, which, yes, is a potential. Um, but basically, we weren't given any answers to the excess deaths. So good to see that people, these questions are being asked. Uh, now, it's good to see that Andrew Bridgen had a couple of dozen MPs there, because the last time he spoke when we recorded it, when he was looking at the uh, his concern over vaccine uh, potential harms um, there was about seven people in the entire house which was a complete disgrace so a few more people there for, for Mr Bridgen which I'm delighted to to see now let's look at some more um, data while we wait for the ministers which are who are so keen to help um, let's wait for them to get back to us but there again we've been waiting this is the European data we've been waiting for over a year now so quite why we're paying these guys I'm not sure Anyway, this is the um, 
This is the um, excess mortality deaths from all causes in di different countries. Now, this is high here, of course, because of the, the pandemic ways. We would expect that. But we do see that it still remains high. So here, here we see that we've got above average figures in Ireland, Australia, New Zealand, Netherlands, United Kingdom, Canada. Uh, we're seeing above average deaths not all attributable to COVID, the majority not attributable to COVID in all these countries, and we're still not getting satisfactory answers as to why this is. Why aren't governments giving us the answers that we deserve? Pe people are dying more than they should. Very frustrating, absolutely frustrating. Um, now, this is, the, uh, this is the table we've looked at before from the Office of National Statistics, uh, you might remember that the black is the five-year average. Uh, the green is uh, none attributable to COVID. The blue is attributable to COVID. Now, we had hoped that the deaths had gone down a bit lately, and, and they had. But we noticed that, again, now we have uh, an excess in, uh, increase in excess deaths, as we did basically for all of uh, 2022. Now, uh, our world in data is also giving us information on... Uh, Excess deaths. Um, now, as of the 5th of March, now they updated this on the 5th of March. It doesn't mean, say, all countries were up to date on that because some countries are, uh, the, the data is really quite uh, quite a lot slower than we would, would we would hope for. But Australia, 16% uh, excess deaths. Brazilian, Brazil, 10%. This is as of the 5th of March update. Canada, 2%, questionable data in Canada. Ireland, 31%. Netherlands, increase of 6%. New Zealand, an increase of 13%. Scotland, 5%. UK as a whole, 3%. US, 2%. Uh, all these countries have got uh, increasing excess deaths from the data that was assimilated on the 5th of March, 2023. A few countries going down. So Bulgaria, excess deaths were down. Eastern European country, Czechia, uh, down 6%. Germany, now the excess in Germany had been very high, so they are down now, which is a relief to see, but they had been very high. Poland and Sweden all down uh, somewhat. Um, but the majority of countries, as we'll see on the European graphic, are up. Now here we're looking at the data directly from the Eurostat site for the 27 European countries that we looked at. And there's that uh, line diagram that we noticed showing excess deaths in the European Union as an average all the way through, uh, or at least from March 2022. But there's more data here in the form of this bar graph. Now, this actually shows the various countries uh, per month. So this is the data for the 12th, uh, the 12th month 2022. That's for the 11th month. Uh, that's for the uh, the 10th month. and We get it all the way uh, through the the year for any month you'd care to look at. But let's look at December's data here uh, as an example. And we see that the figures in December in Iceland, the excess deaths were about, what, 40, 43%. Uh, in Germany, in December, the excess deaths were um, pretty high there, about, what, 37, 37 37%, 37 37.3%. So we see the high in uh, Austria, Slovenia, Ireland, France, Czechia, Switzerland, Netherlands, Estonia, Denmark, Finland, Norway, Lithuania, Belgium. And this is the European average here. And remember, this is looking at the average for December 2022. And we see excess deaths in all of these countries, except these few exceptions here, Romania, where there was uh, less deaths than expected, Bulgaria, where there was less than expected, and Liechtenstein, where there was less than expected. But for most European countries, uh, for most months of the year, even if we go back to March, for example, we see very high uh, excess deaths. That's the data for uh, April. That's the data for May. So um, really um, quite concerning levels of excess deaths in Europe throughout 2022. And again, the European Parliament is not providing clear reasons why this is. We have the data, but we don't have the explanation. Um, just to finish, let's look at the Office for UK, Office for National Statistics data. 
Um, this is the week ending the 3rd of March 2023. 526 deaths involving COVID-19 registered, 4.1% of all deaths. 13,593 deaths were registered in the UK in that week, 7.1% above the five-year average. So we see these deaths are not all attributable to COVID. So questions have been asked in the, in the, in the House of Commons. Um, let's hope we get some definitive answers. Because I must say, all of the clips we've looked at, I've found the Minister's rep responses uh, pathetic. Why aren't they giving us open, transparent responses? Because we want uh, transparency of information. This is supposed to be a democracy. Let's share the data. We can analyse it ourselves. We've got experts to analyse it. Just give us the data. Give us the reasoning. And um, let's stop all this uh, political doublespeak. Thank you very much. And thank you for watching.